big moron! Hey, moron! No! No, no, look at me! I'm the whoa, whoa, boy, dude! Hmm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Uh, don't worry, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll be here doing our live stream. I hope you tune in for us as we go ahead and talk about the last of the OTAs. Today is the very last organized team activities that is voluntary come next week uh the th let's see the fourth fifth and sixth i think it is we'll have the mandatory mini camp where the shit will hit the fan and we'll see if cd lamb is going to show up as well as micah parsons um interesting take here um mike mccarthy talking yesterday about OTAs um, there's you get snippets of things okay there's a term called taking out of context okay sometimes you read like if you get just bits and pieces of things you don't necessarily get the gist of what a person is talking about and you may take it differently than the way it's presented so if you looked at the way Mike McCarthy was being portrayed throughout the media, that Mike McCarthy was pissed off um, at the press conference about Micah Parsons because that's the way it was kind of brought up, brought about. Um, it's true the words were said, but you have to take it in the full context. You know, you can't just go ahead and get snippets and think that this is the exact thing. This is, you know, it's manipulation. You know, as uh, they say, we can often take numbers and skew them any way they want to create a narrative. So this is an interesting um, thing because I want to actually show some of the press conference here. Um, they started out with Mike McCarthy uh, saying that he had cracked the top 10 of NFL coaches. And I believe they said he was six or seven. And, you know, looking at the list of some of the lists that are out there that have them like 14th or 15th and things and having uh, guys like Brian Diabold who are ahead of them. Um, I look at this and say, how can you have a guy like Brian Diabold ahead of Mike McCarthy? And he hasn't beaten Mike McCarthy. I don't believe at least not with a starting quarterback. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's just, just an example to me in my mind, but it's okay. Um, the fact that, hypothetically, if you say that he is a top 10 coach in the NFL, right? My question then is, if you fire him, who are you bringing in that's going to be better? It's easy to go ahead and just say, fire somebody or get rid of somebody. I don't have a problem with doing that with anybody, including Dak Prescott. As long as you have a plan for something that's better. That's the thing. Just getting rid of somebody just to get rid of somebody is stupid. You could look at the Colts and say, yeah, you know, at the time, um, they got rid of Peyton Manning because they said, well, we got Andrew Luck, and so we're going to move on from Peyton Manning. But hindsight looks at this and say, hmm, that guy went to two more Super Bowls winning one more. And maybe we shouldn't have been in such a hurry because Andrew Luck, very, a very good quarterback couldn't stay healthy so I want to play some of this press conference so that way we can get the real gist because he's talking about Micah Parsons because yesterday uh, the flavor of the day was Micah Parsons needs to step up and be a leader that Mike McCarthy's upset about Micah Parsons not being there and so on so let's roll the tape Oop. sorry I don't have hang on here for one second uh, my apologies I don't have it. My camera loaded. Just one second here. Okay, let's try that again. Boom. David, 
Good afternoon. Right. Good morning. We're right. We're close. Right. Right on the board. Good evening. Yeah. So, so just an OTA and before the first question, actually, your thoughts on cracking the top ten for hottest coaches in the NFL? Really? Yeah. It's you got <laughs> 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 Tad Tad Phil will mention that. Yeah, people magazine hot. What can I six. say? You were six. Okay, well good. It's about time you guys got something right. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news was it was behind Andy Reid, but you were. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with the winner, so. No. There you go. Um, when um, we've talked to you before, but when you, at, at this stage of the off-season program where it's voluntary and and you have key players missing for different reasons, whether it's you know contract or CD or some opportunities that come up with with Micah. How much do you interact with them and what do you ask of them to do when they're not here or do you leave that to them and the position coaches or how? No, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody has a responsibility. I mean, this is this is our jobs. Uh, obviously, we have this period of time to, to do football activity, um, you know, that's regulated. So, I mean, it's and it, it, I don't want to say unfortunately, but, you know, 98 percent of our football team has been here. You know, 100 percent of the time. So, we we've accomplished a lot. Frankly, I mean, yesterday's practice was a was a barn burner, just as far as you know, just the energy that the you know the receivers and, and, and the skill guys are putting into it. So we you know we were just really you know cutting back today. So, but yeah, I mean, everybody has a responsibility, you know, whether they're here or not here, uh, to get what they need. Uh, because you know, when we hit Oxnard, that's our one opportunity for real football, and and that's that's the way we approach it. Um, so, yeah, I have confidence that everybody's going to be ready to go when we get there. And you periodically check in with them just by text or Oh, whatever. absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah, it's... Clarence Hill, you good? I don't know. Can I check a few more? <laughs> we'll come back. That's, that's, a side, that's a side thing. Um, with my class of all start telling with Michael being back, how does he look? What has he missed? And you know, what, what's that been like? Yeah, I mean, Mike, Mike is, you know, looks to be in really good shape. So, but you know, it's a new defense, so you know, we we have work to do. How much could he take in? Did he did he have the playbook before? And, and how much could he do on his own? And you know, how behind is he? I guess we'll ask. Well, I, I think like anything, you know, he's engaged. Um, we'll be ready when it's time. So I have confidence in that. Um, Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. You mentioned after Micah's rookie year that his next step is as a great player is to bring guys along with him. Has he missed any opportunity to do that by not being around these last couple off seasons as much? Well, I think anytime you have a chance to you know to be together, it's 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 a it's an opportunity to improve whether it's in the mental realm, the physical realm, uh, which is you know limited obviously this time of year, but you know in the in the, in the emotional connection and so forth. So, um, but you know it's. Uh, it's it's a long year. Training camp is really the the heightened you know focus for all that. There you but go. Yeah, it's definitely an opportunity that's been missed. And is is he here today? Will he be practicing today? Will we see him out there? What was that quote you gave me? Walk in there. What do what do you want? <laughs> he was talking about some his, historical quotes uh, earlier. I saw. Here. You were here. Okay. <laughs> Dallas Morning News, with the decrease in the competitive aspects of what a spring program looks like today compared to years ago, do you find that you know less from an evaluation standpoint about the team you have going into camp than you would in the past? And how, so how does that yeah, no, that, that's true. I, I think like anything, um, you know, there's there, there have been evaluations in my, in my personal experience that... All right, know, so we're going to skip ahead on this and um, go to the people's champion, Jane Slater, who's going to um, point, push into this a little bit more with Mike McCarthy. Um, you know, it is the silly season and about to get sillier because after next week's uh, mini camp, then there's nothing until training camp starts. That's it. That That's the end of the list. Um, 
I'm looking at going to training camp for a couple of reasons this year. Um, I need to help my daughter out in L.A. with her storage unit and stuff, so we'll go out there, take care of that, and go to training camp. Uh, rumor has it that the Cowboys will be practicing with the Rams and, of course, have the preseason game. And that would be kind of cool to go to that preseason game and to see them practicing against somebody else. That would go to some great footage. So that is looking like it's the 7th or the 8th of August. So we'll see uh, – uh, if we can work that out and uh, that maybe I was looking originally at going so that we're there for the first couple padded practices so we can get in there early but it might be a little more exciting with the Rams I'm just saying so we'll see how we do with all that but let's listen to Jane Slater and her question because she kind of pushes it a little bit more Jane coach I just Jane Slater the phone network I just wanted to circle back so Micah Parsons is not here today I'm not doing attendance. Yeah, that's that's you know we try to have some. This know, is where he seems a little bit I'm more not, testy. I'm not going to come up here and talk about one player, especially when you know there's 98 percent of the guys are here. Assuming that he isn't here, how important is it for him to be around defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer, given that he's you know needs to get to know his guys, yeah. the team chemistry, no, I, et cetera? Definitely. Like if any relationship that they have. Yeah, I mean that, that that interaction is going on, and um, so. And like I said, I, I, feel, I feel confident we'll be ready to go. Garrett. Garrett Podell, CBS Sports. Mike, Ezekiel Elliott's been back in the building for about a month. How's his reacclimation process to your offense been, and what have you seen? We're going to get this trade I mean, A lot of ways, too. you know, it just feels like Zeke really never left. I mean, there's, there's things that are different. So, I mean, he's had some new learning, you know, schematically, uh, language, and things like that. But, you know, the foundation of you know what he's done and, and frankly probably his experience in New England so to, ner- to learn another system so yeah no I he's picked it up seamlessly so looks good Nick Nick Harris Dallas Cowboys.com is there any concern with those that he was injury is it more precautionary at this point I uh, just playing the long game yeah no he's uh, Osa is always going to train uh, so he's you know he's here every day so yeah there's no long-term concern Cal- Calvin Watkins that's one news how is uh, Mozzie Smith grown away from the field, it's maturity level. Uh, definitely. I mean, he's obviously, you know, I, I think just like any player, particularly young players, when they when they go through an injury uh, situation, you know, they, they have the operation, they go through the rehab, and then, you know, then there's, then you got the new the new defense and so forth. But uh, very diligent young man. I, I can only tell you, you know, based off of, you know, the time since he's been back, you know, so he's, he puts in the extra time, you know, both with the coaches and the, in the rehab group, so and he's also doing some things away from here too. So um, I, th- I feel like he's on a good path. How tough was it from last year? I think his shoulder might have been a little bit of an issue in terms of the strength that, that you wanted to see. And how did he get through that? Well, I mean, it, it obviously didn't help him, um, you know. So I, I just think, like you know, like all all the rookies, you know, it's it's their, their it's their starting point. Um, so there's definitely things that he'll have. Um, you know, from an experience standpoint, to learn from and apply, and in and, and, and being in a different you know system of defense, so he's got some new learning to do. But yeah, no, I, I think you chalk it up as a good experience. Clark, uh, a couple of weeks of OTAs. How has Trey Lance looked? How much you know? Here we go. Have you seen significant progress from what you saw? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I think just like anything. I mean, you talk about a young quarterback. Um, that comes into a new system, you know, so you got the, the learning curve, but now starting to get the timing with the routes and he's, you know, he's, he's thrown to a, a lot of new players too. So, you know, there's always thresholds and um, reps that, that go into that too. So, but uh, no, he's, he's, um, you know, I'm going to say he's close to being master of the system. He has a really high understanding. Uh, he's communicating very well and he looks more and more comfortable. You know, he just needs reps. I, that, I know I give that answer every time I talk about him, but he just needs as many reps as he can. Todd, Mike, you talked about the running back by committee. Can you define how? Like, what's? All right, so we'll leave it right there. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right now, um, they look at this and they say we've invested a pick in you know a, a fourth round pick that could have been used for a running back this year. We need to make the most of this pick, and they are putting extra work in with Trey Lance to make sure that he is the backup. And being the backup means that Dak Prescott goes down, he is taking over for Dak Prescott. And that's the way they're looking at it. What will probably happen, 
what may probably happen would be is uh, Trey Lance moves up to number two. Friday, he looks decent in, in uh, training camp. Um, they cut Cooper Rush, and maybe they end up bringing him back on a new contract that would be less if nobody picks him up. And that's where we go with this situation with uh, Trey Lance. Um, he is, you know, as he put it, he says his confidence is much higher, uh, much higher than it's ever been uh, in his career. And that's kind of amazing when you start thinking about, you know, you think about Kyle Shanahan, who's supposedly one of the top coaches, that a team that invested so much to get him seemingly failed him in the coaching. So the Cowboys have gone through. They've been working on his his throwing motion, his mechanics, his footwork, everything else, and bringing him along to become a viable NFL quarterback. And I just don't understand where it is or what happened with San Francisco, how they ended up just giving up. But, of course, the Cowboys, you know, they don't want them to end up being that the end of the year he's gone and he's not – done anything the other part of this equation is is it's always good to kind of pump them up a bit um because if you have some other team that loses a starting quarterback um during training camp or early in the season you may be able to have them as a trade partner and maybe instead you get a second or a third round pick so those are things that you always want to look at and keep your options open and of course you know, there's no guarantee that every quarter, any quarterback is going to make it through the season. And you do want to have a viable option if and when your starter goes down. So I want to finish this off this morning before I go back to getting back to work here. This is one of those things that gets, got me scratching my head here. That ESPN, which has literally destroyed the Dallas Cowboys are talking about chances to win the Super Bowl. I talk about the pivot that there's a cycle every year. The last three years, it's been exactly this. The Cowboys stink. They're a disappointment. Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott are on the hot seat. And so on, right? They go through free agency. They don't care about winning. You know, all these other teams have passed them and are better than the Cowboys. Remember last year, the Jets were Super Bowl favorite. You know what I'm saying? The Giants were thought to be better than the Cowboys last year with Daniel Jones and all that, having finally made the playoffs. And then by training camp, all of a sudden, you know, it's Super Bowl or bust. And that pivot seems to be starting right now. Let's listen in. My, my insider extraordinaire. Yes. So I keep being told by everybody, oh, they're going to get a deal worked out with, uh -huh. with C.D. Lamb. Oh, they're going to get a deal worked out with Micah Parsons. Oh, they're going to get a deal worked out with Dak Prescott. Well, as far as I can tell, it's going to be June this weekend. Yeah. And I still don't have deals done. So what gives here? So I think C.D. is the more likely candidate because of the wide receiver market, because we've already seen um, a couple guys. We saw A.J. Brown and Amon St. Brown already get locked up. Justin Jefferson is the big one still out there. And the funny thing is with Jerry Jones, he makes the me funny thing. because he literally said, you know, with CD, I want to kind of see, you know, some more leaves fall before, you know, and then we had some wide receiver deals get done. Right. And the longer they the wait, fall. the more expensive he's going to be. But I think we've already seen some dominoes fall. That's why the wide receiver is going to get locked up first. I don't know about the quarterback. So we saw the chances there. And, and, and earlier today, D. Wood, you went over on their win total. Again, FBI, our, our football power index, our analytics put up all of their numbers today. Win totals and probabilities and all that kind of stuff. And their number was 10.3, and you went over. So do you give this team, should they be considered, as it asks on the screen, Super How Bowl many over? Team? How many games <laughs> this is crazy. over? Yeah. How many? Yeah, I mean, this is a team that, you know, <laughs> has, what, cut three years. They've been 12-plus 12, 12 right? yeah. per year. I, Are they I Super Bowl contenders? No one, no one cares hmm. anymore if they win 12 games. Right, the days of winning 12 games and getting knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. We're uh, sick of it. We're, no one's excited about <laughs> it. I don't put what, like, I, right now, I have the Cowboys like the fifth best in the NFC. In the NFC? Yes. San Francisco? San Francisco. Detroit? Detroit. Green Bay? Yep. Who am I forgetting? Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia. Okay. Yep. So, okay. And oh, then Dallas. So, Dallas. fifth best is not, does not, usually the fifth best team doesn't get to the Super Bowl. It's not impossible. <laughs> Harry, answer the question on the screen, if you would, please. Should the Cowboys be considered Super Bowl contenders? No. No, they shouldn't, Greeny. 
the, uh, when you look at who they lost offensively, they lost two key offensive linemen. Now, I need to see how quickly Tyler Guyton is going to get up to speed. Also, Co Cooper Beebe, who they drafted at the center position. Those are two positions that they lost last season. Also, they're going to have to get adjusted to Mike Zimmer's new system. How comfortable are those, are those defensive players going to be in a new system? We've seen they, they had tremendous success under Dan Quinn, turn, getting turnovers, sacking the quarterback. Are they going to be able to have that same production? Now, I love Zim as a defensive coordinator, but how comfortable are those players going to be in that system? And also, are they going to be able to run the football? They did not address that need in the draft with a younger player that can really push them in those regards. They brought back Ezekiel Elliott. So I don't view them as a Super Bowl contender, and I have them right now as the fifth best team in the NFC. But also watch out for the Los Angeles Rams. That's a team mm -hmm. that you don't want to exclude either. And Atlanta, if they get hot, I mean, there's a lot of different ways mm -hmm. that this thing can go. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Look, when well, Jerry Greeny, said you they're said all it. in. I didn't even have to bring it up. You, you, you brought go. it up, Greeny. You brought I, I the like Falcons Atlanta. My I, man, I didn't baby. love their first round of, of draft, but I still think the Falcons could be a... Okay. You, you know what's funny is to me how there's certain teams that every year they talk about how they're always going to be good. Does it seem like every year we talk about Atlanta is going to be good in, in recent history? It seemed like every year, you know, when they drafted Kyle Pitts and stuff, and they got the new quarterback, you know, and now they got – every year it seems like, Atlanta, oh, man, Atlanta. You know, I don't know, Atlanta might – yeah, okay. It's kind of like the Jets. Every year there's the great hype for the Jets. Oh, my God, the Jets, you know, we got Aaron Rodgers, and they got this guy. And, and, and it seems like every year they disappoint. The one thing I can say about the Cowboys is it's been steady. It's at least been steady. All right, good people, we're going to go ahead and get to work. Um, I can take plenty of breaks while I'm working here. The weather is fantastic, and I got some stuff to do on the inside and on the outside and get back uh, out of here tomorrow. As always, I appreciate you guys. I hope to see you guys at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight. I will see you then. Peace out.